Hi everyone and welcome. I'm down here in my wormery and like I'll do sometimes I've got my little sketch board here written down some notes about what I'd like to take care of today. Today I'm working on my ENCs. Uh, it's pretty easy to see my ENCs. They're all right here surrounding the board. The oldest one is the bag. Almost two years at this point. The one over here is the one we're talking about today. It's the 161 day old system and the one that's down here right here on the corner on the ground it's only 10 days old and the worms that are populating that were actually taken from the system that we're going to be working on today. And today's actually going to be the final haul out of worms from that system because I believe that the system is done. Often before I would consider a bin to be done, I would wait a little bit longer for this stuff to dry out, become a little bit more crumbly. Um, maybe even allow time for the cocoons within the material to start hatching out. And even give them um, extra time for the baby worms to make their way out of the material. But today I'm doing something a little bit different. This, uh, this batch of castings is not really going to be used for gardening. Or you know a lot of times at this point when the last haul of worms is removed from a system. The, um, the castings are going to be used mainly for gardening purposes or whatever. But in this case the material is going to become the new bedding for all the remaining cocoons in here. Because my launch method for kind of splitting the uh, inhabitants of this bin uh, are going to kind of be, you know, the new bin that I started 10 days ago, populated with whatever worms I'm able to collect up using this baiting approach, and then allowing the secondary um, split of the population to be all babies, all um, little baby worms coming out of these tons and tons of cocoons I'm seeing all over the material everywhere I look there's cocoons so the um, the first thing is going to be to extract what remains in here and uh, get those little guys into here for transport and uh, I guess while I'm at it if I bump into any of them I could just you know collect them up yesterday I actually went through this material pretty thoroughly spent a little bit of time stirring it up trying to get it all uh, equally mixed so a lot of the dry stuff that had been on the top surface exposed to the air over the um, the past interval since I did it last could be mixed with the more damp stuff that's down low and the stuff just keeps getting better and better but every time I would encounter some worms I would just be throwing them over into the into that feeding area, into that area that I'm trying to lure the worms into. And I, I moved what I thought was a whole bunch of them. And this material did almost look like it was completely devoid of worms. I, I combed through it back and forth. Like I said, the whole while, pretty much seeing cocoons everywhere I looked. These things are everywhere. And, um... As I would encounter a worm, I would just toss them over into the feeding area. This time I'm just going to toss them right into the transit tray here. <laughs> um, kind of like my little shuttle bus. Take the worms from location A to location B. And like I said earlier, I, I'd be picking through here and I would just keep bumping into little baby worms, little juveniles of various sizes. And I know that every time I'm combing through here and I spot... Um, cocoon after cocoon, I know that this thing is just ripe with um, new life that's going to come squirming out very soon, I believe. It's going to be exciting to see. I, I've, um, I've only launched cocoons a couple times, and it was actually when I first got these particular um, worms. My Euros were provided to me originally as cocoons. That's back in the crazy worm lady days. I don't think she retails worms anymore. I mean, for that matter, I don't think she even um, maintains her channel anymore either. I haven't seen any new content up there for a while. I know we all miss her. It'd be nice if she would come out with some new videos one of these days. But, um, yeah, so that was a while ago. And it was the only time I did it, and it'll be kind of cool to see what the result of it is. And I'm even wondering if I want to take too many worms out of here because I did kind of think like, hey, you know, there's no harm in having a few more mature worms in here. So it's probably not the end of the world if I don't haul that many of them out. So 
we'll use this as kind of like a final opportunity to till the material up because at that point I might just end up leaving it kind of do one of those set it and forget it kind of approaches even though the material is starting to dry out nicely once I um, put the plastic covering back on top it'll sort of lock in the existing moisture and I hope it's not too damp I don't think it is I think it'll be just right And I guess we'll, you know, ultimately get to see if <laughs> that judgment was um, an error or if it was a good judgment. But I wouldn't want it to get much drier than this. Um, it's got a nice, definitely got a nice dampness level to it. I just wonder how it's going to uh, equalize once I cover it up. I don't think we're going to see clumping. I don't think it'll like get start returning to clumping. I um. I probably will allow it to be able to breathe off a little bit of its moisture. So, uh, yeah, maybe maybe the texture of it will improve over time. But I don't think I'm going to pick out any more adult worms. You can see I've got a good number of them. Leaving some behind, some bigger, some smaller, whatever, they could stay. We'll, uh, we'll focus more on just extracting those worms that we baited into the feeding area. Just can't resist trying to pick off a few more. <laughs> I just don't do this frequently, and I've seen people who actually, as their standard method, use individually picking worms out of material as their process. Yeah, I always wanted to see, I don't know, kind of a bulk <laughs> process um, happening here. Never really wanted to get down into this sort of level, but whatever. We're not gonna. Let's leave them. Part of the plan was to leave it partially populated with some pilgrim worms into this new new but old space or old but new space <laughs> still debating what to do with this stuff here too i guess maybe you know since the new bit has plenty of bedding and everything like that it seems like it might be a nice thing for this paper here to stay with these castings the plastic will come back we'll cover everything back up again but everything that's in here um, no sense in taking it away from the worms. There's all kinds of bedding and food in here, but I believe we'll just relocate all of it with these worms. In the past, we had recycled the material so that we would have all kinds of well-broken-in food items, well-broken-in cardboard, um, paper, different types of bedding chunks. And at this point, hey, let's let the worms remain nice and cozy in here. Hanging out, try to minimize the shock on their relocation. Let's get them all out of here. It does seem like we must have either successfully gotten the material that they had been inhabiting dry enough and devoid of food enough to motivate them to leave. Or maybe we just came up with a better combination of bait foods on this go around. Because the original attempt at luring these worms out of this material, I think, wasn't very effective over the first, say, week or so. But things have definitely improved here. What a great turnout. I think that might be the best view of them we're going to get. I mean, we'll release them. We'll get a little video of that too, but... This was a nice close-up view of, you know, how many worms appear to have been collected here. And I, I was skeptical. I didn't think I'd get too many. But I've been going with rough estimates of 250 per haul out. And I would definitely say we've got at least that many here again. So I'm going to stick to the 250 for each of the three haul outs. My guesstimate for how many worms we've got occupying that newest bin over there is something in that 750 range. All right. I'm not going to go too crazy with this uh, kind of relaunch here. I've got the official paperwork to, to get it into the books formally as the new, the newest of my worm bins with ENCs, but I've even specified cocoons. It's even like on its own little miniature size label, a little smaller than usual. I guess that's because I'm really treating this as sort of sort of as an interim. Um, location for these little guys. I do want to get uh, a few more of those deeper types of bins that I have. Like the bin that we're going to be looking at next. 
that's the type of bin that I've been trying to get myself over to and move away more from these shallow tubs. So let's set this aside. I don't think there's much else to do here other than cover up. We're going to now let them also maintain their moisture, but in a way that allows for the system to air out and maybe dry a little bit in the process. Definitely different from what I usually do, right? Not quite the same. And you know what? So we don't have to come back to it. Let's go ahead and apply today's <laughs> inaugural sticker. In fact, we're since it's an interim solution, I'm going to stick it right on top of the old sticker. And we'll, um, you know, we'll at some point soon give them a new home, somewhere a little bit bigger. But let's go ahead and release the worms we collected. Now before we move on to the new bin, just figured we would summarize what we had with this bin that we just sort of concluded its life cycle with, with which we launched two new systems. One of them was launched 10 days ago, the new one will have today's date as its launch date. But basically, this 161, basically 23 week old ENC system was originally launched with what I estimated to be 500 worms. The fact that we took 750 out of the system, as well as probably uh, many hundred cocoons, I think that was kind of a nice net result. The feedings were 19, and that includes the food that was uh, added to the tub originally when it was built even before the worms were added. So the food that came with the bin on its launch plus 18 feedings, which averages to every eight and a half days it getting a, f a feeding, even though as everyone knows, that's kind of skewed, um, you know, towards the end also, you know, sort of like let the bin forage and it'll take time without fresh feedings for many, many weeks at times. So basically the um, interval is probably less than that. If you take out that distortion that occurs to the math when you start really spreading out um, the feedings or basically doing away with the feedings towards the end. The, um, the haul outs, as I mentioned earlier, two of them already with which we've launched the newest system that I've got right here on the bench in front of me. And the last thing that you see down here at the bottom, it's just the tally of how long the bin was composting, how long the bin was what I call foraging, and then most recently, 22 days to complete the migration, get all the worms out of there. So here we are with our volunteers. They're gonna be uh, released right down into this bin over here. So far this bin has received no attention other than the two haul outs adding worms. No feedings, nothing like that. Oops, oops sorry, let's try to bring this back. <laughs> so right here smack in the middle, once we remove the paper, we're gonna add the worms. Let's not delay, let's get it started now. Hmm. You gotta love it when it comes out that nice and neat. So let's see, uh, sometimes we don't have all this stuff surrounding them and obscuring our view of them. So we'll, uh, we'll see how much of this stuff we could push aside, just to get a little quick footage of these guys getting cozy in their new home and then we'll be done. Well, I already cleaned off my gloves <laughs> and re removed them, but whatever. At this point, I'm just going to go bare hands. I, uh, I just felt like I saw a whole bunch of cocoons just staring me in the face, so I thought I'd reach out there and see if I can grab a couple of them, take a closer look. They're just, you know, scattered all over the place. Like I was saying, the material in the bin that we just removed these guys from is littered with cocoons everywhere. And... Um, and it's just crazy how almost anywhere you look, there's just tons of them every place. So, you know, I uh, I also figured whatever, I, I'm going to get my hands a little bit mucked up here. Um, it's fine. I, I just usually like to not have this sort of um, raw, damp castings type material sitting right on the top surface before I put the paper coverings on. just like to have a little sort of dusting of somewhat less sticky materials 
help keep the covering materials that I use on top free of excess um, debris getting stuck to it. <laughs> It's like, oh brother, it's a worm bin. How neat and tidy do you need to be, right? <laughs> we got a big lump here. I guess since some of it is fresh food, you saw a banana stem in there and some of the other bits and pieces of yummy stuff that was used to lure the worms out of the finished compost. Well, that'll, that'll kind of go in there as a little snack, but I don't think I'm gonna treat it as a feeding. I'm just gonna treat it as the material that was, um, you know, being used by the worms that we bought over as their living quarters for the past few days. So just bringing that over to maintain consistency for them for a little bit. Oh, okay. A little bit of cleaning up to do, but not too much, luckily. <laughs> but uh, before I go, let me just really quickly say thank you. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, as always, please remember to leave me a thumbs up. That's always really appreciated. If you haven't done so already, also consider subscribing to the channel too. That's really appreciated as well. All right, everyone, have a great day. Thanks for watching. Bye.